either the person themselves would have approached us or they would have tried to get proxy readings through someone very close to them and they send their birth particulars. But proxy readings or consultations I don't encourage and I tell them I can't do anything if they don't come themselves or if they don't communicate with me directly. Sometimes they are put off by it, but sometimes they do come in spite of my saying that. Like for example, when B.P. Singh formed his, uh, was it the Janta Dal? Yeah. In Bangalore. He was in Bangalore. Then he sent one of his aides, I think, uh, Santosh Bharatiya, a famed journalist, with his chart and he wanted to know about his uh, prospects, political prospects. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I told him, I can't tell you, discuss his chart with you. He has to come himself. So Santosh Bharatiya, he said, no, he can come, but if, if he comes, there will be a huge crowd coming with him, all his followers and admirers and party members, you know. So I said, that's all right, no. I don't mind, let them come. But only Mr. V.P. Singh will, will, will be with me in the room. No, he said, that will uh, create a big problem. I said, that is not my problem. If it creates a, causes a traffic problem or some people crowding around the compound walls, you know. If Mr. Singh wants his chart to be analyzed, he has to come. So that was the end of it. He didn't come. But as a result, I was able to get the point across. But it is okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, speaking of uh, to be PM and all that, Narendra Modi is now the man in. I presume you have analyzed his chart also in your editorials. I remember having read that. What bird details are you using, and how trusted are? I'm using the bird details that came to me from someone very close to him, but I cannot uh, disclose the source of my information beyond that point. Okay. And uh, does it fit to the minute with his life events? I think it does. Okay. Is he going to win? Well, if you look at the charts of the two main contenders for the Prime Minister's post, he definitely has a stronger chart compared to the others. And his Dasha Bhukti is also very supportive now. But there's also a big if. If perchance there is another Prime Ministerial candidate with a, an even stronger chart, then that person could become the Prime Minister. But in spite of that, now Modi is running Chandra Dasha. And Chandra has Nichibanga strength and is otherwise qualified for Raja Yoga, which he is already enjoying anyway. But for his destiny to be interlinked, intertwined with the countries, it has to be something more, not just the chief ministership. For that, what I found is a clue which I think will work. India has just, I don't remember the exact dates, India has moved into Chandra Dasha. Chandra is in Karkataka in his own sign for India. Modi is running Chandra Dasha. Chandra is in Scorpio. So, being in trines and the same Dashadipatis, I think his destiny is going to get very closely tied up with the country's destiny, which in other words could imply he could be the next head of the government. Okay. Let's quickly take BJP and Congress chart. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't we also simultaneously take BJP and Congress chart? Yeah. What do you see BJP winning over? I think the BJP is moving into a better phase. While the Congress which has Mesha Moon 
is soon moving into Ashtamashini phase. Uh, the BGP is moving into the second part of Sade Sati. And from what I have understood is, Sade Sati is not always bad. It brings in changes, not always bad. But Ashtamashini is invariably bad. Brings in a change in your portfolio or status, either career-wise or in the social structure. So the Congress may suffer a uh, coming down of status. Okay. This is applicable even to Jataka charts with Ashtam Shani. To? Jataka charts, uh, normal people charts. No, no, but of course the Dasha Bhukti and all have been considered. Okay. Uh, what, what, normally it is said, uh, like for transit, to see the Ashtagvarga points, mm -hmm. is it 100% reliable to move no, it? No, Varga I don't use that much. Okay. So I would rather not say anything on that. Okay. But I presume your father used to use Ashtagvarga quite heavily. Not much, no. Huh? Okay. He's written a book on it. Okay. I've studied it, tried it on many charts. Okay. But for my own work and studies, I don't use it. What about Ayur, you know, longevity calculation? Uh -huh. Which technique works the best so far? The Dasha Vichara technique is the best. Dasha Vichara, that is uh, analyzing the chart in its entirety. Hmm. The Yat Bhava, the strength of the Lagna, position of the moon, no, I mean, and the Dashas. No, I meant calculation of longevity. For that only. Somewhere down the line, I've noticed with my experiences in astrology of Dr. Raman, mm -hmm. he was an excellent master of Vimshotri Dasha, mm -hmm. but he never wrote a book on that. Somewhere... A yeah, question of time, you know, he used to be so busy, and for writing a book you need a lot of time. You know, when I look at it, I, I, I see the role of your family as being a mentor and guide to the whole astrological fraternity in India, especially the English-speaking clients. And now, time has seen that you all, you all have been a mentor to the West also. So, we look at it from the point of view is, I am telling you the complaints I have. With them. Yeah. Dr. Raman Saab knew Vimshotri Desha really well. A. Uh, be on longevity somewhere down the line in his writings, you see he had a very fine grasp of longevity mm -hmm. calculation or predicting about that. That's the second book. Third, a Brihat Parashara or Shastra because it becomes our test book. We expected that to happen. Fourth, I think if I remember his chart well, he had a Mangal Dosh, what we call it, a Mangal yeah. Dosh. Uh -huh. you know. And if my memory serves me right, <coughs> He wrote an editorial or a piece on Mangal Dosh yeah. and he said part 2 will come or the next part will follow. He never landed up doing that. Yeah. You know, Mangal Dosh is one because of which so many families in India go through a lot of trouble, especially if you have a girl, you know, that Manglik Dosh, yeah. you know, people don't get married. So the sign, because Dr. Raman Sam had a scientific bent of mind, you know, a very rash, nice approach, balanced approach towards these things. He also knew the exception rules with his yeah. experience, you know. So, these things, and especially the fifth one was matching of horoscopes. He never did those, because those would have been the areas by which a lot of people make others go through hell, you know, so, so to speak, you know, go through turmoil. I mean... He's touched up on um, uh, Kuchu Dosha or Mangalik, uh, the subject of Mangaliks, and also matching of charts in his book, Muhurta. An exhaustive piece is what I... But it's not exhaustive. Yeah. yeah. The book is focused more on Muhurta. Yeah. Uh, and I think uh, it's also unfair to expect so much from one single individual when you don't give him recognition, nor any kind of help in the government, it makes use of its services all the time, but never otherwise supports his plea for bringing it into the university. But as a single individual, he did more than what anyone else could have done. Yeah, that's, that's no doubt about that. Yes. Also, I feel, I mean, uh, 
for it to enter universities now has been a paid work of last before it entered a 40 50 years paid work which That's raman right. sahab laid the foundation yeah. you know so for it coming into universities uh, i mean i think anybody who observes history understands who has done the foundation of it you know yeah. of giving it a scientific you know and uh, especially with the i mean the way i look at it is the biggest contribution of raman sahab is to bringing all this knowledge to the english speaking uh, educated yes, yeah, you know educated, educated public, public yeah. so that it can grow further and also he is he is broken away from the parampara and yeah. given it out to a common man irrespective of that person's caste or religion you know so that contribution i feel not even the elderly lot have noticed that significant contribution of dr ramans if i was to be asked yeah. you know because i have discussed that a lot with mentor you know of breaking it from the parampara otherwise it is you know i am the guru i only have one student that is my child here he has become the guru of everybody yes sir. you know that is one thing uh are there any family secrets of astrology that you are normally not written about that you feel you can So whatever secrets he had, he has given them all in his books. Whatever secrets I use in my techniques, I've learned only from his books, not even from him personally. Okay. So these secrets are no longer secrets, and they're available to anyone who's seriously interested in the subject. There is one book which I always have thought about. That was when Dr. Raman. Gave one observation to B. Suryanarayan Rao ji, and B. Suryanarayan ji said, "No, it is wrong. It will not work out." Mm -hmm. Raman sir failed in his prediction. Yeah. At that time, doctor, uh, th at that time, Suryanarayan ji said, "Go inside, and you will find a book that was by his father. Mm -hmm. uh, if I remember the name, Gopal." Gopal Rao. Yeah. yeah. And there was a small book, a book of exceptions. Mm -hmm. Have you studied that? No, I have not come across it. No. No. Did you uh, ever feel you wanted to, or where you, you never asked for it? No, I never asked for it. I didn't oh. even know of its existence until you told me now. Oh, but it's <laughs> there in his. Uh, my experiences in no, astrology. I, I know. I don't know how I could have missed it. It's okay. Because Gopal Rao was not into astrology or anything. He was a great tapasvi, a typical pious. Brahmin of those days, okay. who did his uh, prayers regularly three times a day. Or it might have been B. Suryanarayan Rao's grandfather. I, I'm forgetting. No. It. But I still remember that small book, mm -hmm. and Ramal Sahab writing about it in my experiences. No, no. Probably I when I go so. home, I'm going to redo the book. Okay, know. let me know. Then yeah. I'll be able because to. Because it's been my. But I have not heard him mention it, nor have I seen it. Okay. And the only person who has mentioned it so far is you. Okay, I could be wrong. <laughs> I could be wrong. But I I I read uh, you know through my turmoils with astrology and its publications. For me, that book has been my pillar. Yeah. It's been a pillar. I read it every night, mm -hmm. apart from living with the Himalayan masters mm -hmm. and one two more books. It's been I I will read at least a chapter or at least half a chapter or one page. Okay. Uh -huh. It's it's been like a soothing balm. Mm -hmm. You know, when one goes through so many turmoils of astrologers and. I don't know how he faced the kind of the astrology is lot, you know, with the kind of politics in it and all that. Yeah, he yeah. faced a lot of problems, terrible problems. How did he deal with it? Well, I think uh, his attitudes were very spiritual, very highly evolved. He had no rancor against anyone, though many people tried to harm him spitefully or resenting his growth and his growing famous and all that. But he never hit back. He just ignored all of that. And he was a great follower of the Bhagavad Gita, okay. chapter sixteen. He would always endorse. And this was Lok Asukadu Ke Samay Krutva Labha Labha Ujjaya Jeeo. He lived it in every single word, thought, and deed of his. And to a large extent, you can attribute it to his lagna being Kumbha, a deeply spiritual. This passion, its sign, ruled by Saturn, the Vairagya Karaka, and the Moon being exalted in the fourth house with Lagna Dipati, so that brought in a great synergy in his thought, word, and deed. 
So he, he was a classic example of Manasvekam, Majasvekam, Karmanvekam, Mahatmanaha. So whatever he thought, he said, and whatever he said, he did. There was no dichotomy, no split. He wouldn't think something and do something else, you know, which is what diplomacy means basically. You have something else and you do something else to either appease or please someone else. He had none of that. Okay. He was truly a Rishi. We missed him. Mm. We missed him. I wish he was alive today for and us to see. And he was never ever after money. That was an important, you know, you have the economics of any kind of proposition. Beyond that, and even the magazine was priced very modestly, even for those times. So, he took it as a mission, like, you know, karmanya vadika raste ma paleshu kadachana. So, he took upon himself the mission of promoting and propagating astrology properly, but without expecting the results of even it's moving into the university. He worked for it, but he didn't expect the results. What combination do you see in his chart that made him so famous, a legend of legends? Three Kendras and Stirarashis are occupied by planets. Two, five, six planets are in Kendras. In the fourth, you have Moon and Saturn, Saturn. Mars, Mercury, Venus Seven. in the seventh, and Jupiter, Jupiter in the tenth. Of these, Moon is exalted, Jupiter is Vargottama, Mercury is Vargottama, Mars, tenth lord, is in the ninth lord's nakshatra, Shukra's nakshatra, Pupa. Venus is, of course, Yoga Karaka. So, Venus and Mars, as ninth and tenth lords, are together. And Mars is influencing the 10th house, which has Vargottama Guru, aspected by Lagna Shani, and also exalted Moon as sixth lord, which gave him a lot of enemies or inimical activity against him, even within the circle of relatives, and also uh, professionally. Okay. But he would always say the sun in the sixth house protects one from inimical activity or the mischief of enemies. He had sun in the sixth house. Okay. So, in a way this is uh, Chetusagara Yoga, which means, you know, your fame spreads across the seas. Okay. All the uh, Kendras, except the Lagna, are occupied by powerful planets. Okay. He had done a great amount of research on Nadis. Great amount of research. Mm -hmm. Very few had gone so deep into it. I presume in 62, Nagaraja Sharma, huh. I can be wrong, uh, gave him Dhruv Nadi, handed over Dhruv Nadi to him. Right? Okay. Huh. I can be wrong here, you know, I'm speaking from memory. Then Raman Sab wrote, even in my experiences and even in that letter to K. N. Rao, which K. N. Rao has published in his book, mm -hmm. I thought, it, I presume it was a personal letter, but anyways, that's not the topic. Uh, that he just, he has given up all his astrological activity, he's handed over, I said to you, and he's only waiting to finish Dhruv Nadi. Mm -hmm. That never came out in a book form. No, it had not come out. But, uh, you know, uh, the different uh, Nadi Amshas have been published in the magazine up to a point. So that is, uh, those are the Nadi Amshas which he translated in. Yeah, but what one understands from, and what I... But once when I asked him about these Nadis, I said like, uh, uh, this Dhruva Nadi as you say, uh, what about like, uh, where does it go next or how or how? Like, after you, like what? Then he said, I can't say anything because it will be given in the Nadis itself as to whom it should go next. So that was the end of any discussion on the topic. But that I presume is the Mantra Nadis, am I right? No, Dhruva Nadi itself. Any Nadi for that matter, if it's a J 